It is officially that season where you're going to hear football is back a thousand times. But this time, it's true for Broncos country as they get ready for preseason week one against the Dallas Cowboys from Mile High. Kicking off Saturday night, uh, 8 Central Time, 7 Mountain Time. So we're going to get ready for a pretty fun game. I mean, it's preseason. So, like, football's back. That's always a fun thing. But don't expect to see a lot of the stars, okay? Now, I've got five storylines to watch for during this preseason game because once all the starters come out, whichever ones do play after the first series or two, you might be left wondering, what am I watching for, right? A bunch of guys who aren't going to make the roster. Might not be the case. Now, I am going to plug I'm feeling a little bit under the weather today, so just bear with me here. Now, I think it's important to look at the injury report before we start looking at any other details here because there are some notable names that are not going to be present during the first preseason game. Tyree Cleveland would love to have seen what he could offer after Tim Patrick going down, right? Could he step up? No, he's still dealing with a throat injury. He's not going to play uh, most likely along with Ronald Darby. I would not expect any of these guys to play. It's the preseason. They're not going to push any of them. They all missed the joint practice with the Cowboys yesterday. Don't expect them to play on Saturday. Now, my first storyline I'm going to watch for, which wide receiver steps up, right? Which guy jumps at the opportunity of Tim Patrick, unfortunately, leaving some targets on the field? Who's going to rise to the occasion and make the most of it? Now, the Broncos recently, just a couple hours ago, released their first depth chart here. And it looks something like this. This is what it is. And the first thing that I found interesting was Montreal Washington. Fifth round pick out of Samford is wide receiver Five. I mean, after like three receivers, it's kind of just a cluster. But he was higher than some of their veterans on the depth chart here. Now, Montreal Washington has been the star of camp so far, I think. Sure, there's been some other guys that have stepped up and made some plays and whatnot. But if you asked anyone who went to go watch Broncos training camp, there's no way they don't mention, oh, yeah, that number 12 guy, the rookie, he's really good. Now, this is always my issue with training camp. I get way too drunk and way too high on overreacting to clips that emerge from practice. Let's see how that translates to the game, right? Let's see how that translates to fully padded live not practice, live game, right? Everything like that. So I'm going to be watching for Montreal, Washington. That will definitely be a big storyline to see is what wide receiver rises to the occasion this preseason and training camp, unfortunately, with no Tim Patrick this season. Now, I've got an honest question for everyone. Do you watch preseason games? I'm not going to clown anyone that doesn't watch all 12 quarters now of three preseason games. It is the preseason. I think it's the biggest, like, ball buster out there of, like, football's back, oh my god, and then it's like, whoa. Brett Rippon and Josh Johnson is not what I signed up for. This is not football, right? This is like, it's, 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 not, it's kind of football, but it's not all the way there. But be honest, Y for yes or N for no. Next storyline I'm watching for, what about just Nick Benito, okay? The Broncos' first overall selection in this past draft class. Let's see what he can offer because he's right now in a training camp battle for that third edge rusher spot. Randy Gregory's still on the pup list, so Benito is penciled in as the starter ahead of him. But once Gregory returns, he'll move back to battling with Baron Browning and Malik Reed for that third edge rusher. Now, in their joint practice on, what is today, Thursday? Oh, today's Friday. So on Thursday, he had four sacks in the Broncos-Cowboys joint practice. Dude was wreaking havoc. In fact, the Broncos, by the way, dominated that joint practice on offense and defense. I think the Cowboys are going to be bad this year. I really do. So maybe this is just a sign of what's to come here. So Nick Benito, like I said, with Randy Gregory and Bradley Chubb just flat out not being reliable. No one can tell you otherwise. We've never seen Randy Gregory play a full season. Bradley Chubb has not played a full season since 2018. Would his number or could Nick Benito's number be called on? earlier than maybe what the plan was, right? So that's why I'm going to be watching for Benito in preseason. Is he getting pushed around by the big boys in the NFL? Or can he go with the big dogs and run with the fastest and the strongest of them? Now, before we get to the rest of the training camp, uh, excuse me, preseason storylines, 
plus some shout outs. That's why you subscribe. You always get shout outs when you subscribe. Help us reach 9,000 subs, guys. Please, please, please. We are just over 500 away. So if you're looking for a Broncos YouTube channel this season, you found the right spot. Hit that sub button. Next storyline I am watching for, the battle for the third cornerback spot. We know it's PS2, Ronald Darby, and Kwan Williams as your nickel corner. But after that, nothing's a guarantee. And it's a battle between the veteran Michael Ojemudia, fifth-round pick out of Iowa, who had a great season. We'll look at stats in a moment. And then the rookie, Damari Mathis, out of Pitt, who has been turning heads so far at training camp. And let's see how he fares in the preseason. I loved Doji Moody back in 2020. I thought he was like a, a diamond in the rough. A, you know, for a fifth-round pick, you couldn't ask for much more. Or, you know, he made great contributions early on. And unfortunately, last year, it was the injuries, right? He just got injured in preseason. And then I'm not really sure whatever happened between him and – I said fifth, third-round pick. I don't know why I was thinking fifth. But regardless, uh, Fangio and Ojemudia just – couldn't get on the same page, I guess. Complete drop-off in 2021 after the injury. Now, Damari Mathis, like I said, he has been one of the bright spots so far during training camp. It is training camp, though. You know, it's one of those, hey, how much are we going to read into drills where there's not even live contact or anything like that? That's why my, my biggest issue with training camp is I overreact to some of these stories. And then week one of NFL regular season rolls around, and everyone gets piped down a notch because it's the big dog's time to play. Next storyline I'm going to be watching for is Nathaniel Hackett's head coaching debut. Um, Hackett hopped on the PMT part of my take podcast today. It was really funny. If you, if you want to get more Hackett stuff in your life, you should go listen to that over at PMT because it was pretty interesting. So how is Hackett going to manage the workload, right? How much time does he let the starters play? Does he sit all 22 starters from the first whistle till week one of the regular season? Or does he want some of these new guys like Russell Wilson, who doesn't need to prove anything in training camp in preseason? There has been some murmurs out there. I would, you could upgrade it from murmurs that Russ hasn't been necessarily the sharpest tool in the shed so far in camp. But it's also training camp. That's what it's for to shake some of the rust off and whatnot, but I'm not concerned whatsoever about that at all. Russ does not have to play a single snap in preseason to better himself or anything like that, in my opinion. Now, the Broncos are expected to sit most of their starters, so it's unfortunate that you won't get to see maybe some of the big names, uh, Russ hooking up with Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy for much of the game. Maybe they play a series and I say they, probably just Sutton and Judy, I don't envision you getting to see much Russ at all here. But when it comes to this debate of should the starters play in the preseason, where do you stand on it? P for play or S for sit? I think it's very situational. If it's new guys, new regime, all that newness, yeah, one quarter of the preseason, if you get hurt, like, yes, that sucks, but this is football. Right? At some point, you got to start stop pussyfooting around and go like, all right, we just got to play football. So I'm for situation. I'm in the middle. I copped out. I'm, I'm a coward. All right, next and final storyline to watch for here, Jonas Griffith versus Alex Singleton. The battle for the other starting inside linebacker position next to Josie Jewell. The depth chart was released, and Jonas Griffith is ahead of Singleton so far. He ended the season – very well last year. After being traded from San Francisco, Jonas Griffith was one of the brighter spots on defense last year that was unfortunately just devastated with injuries. But Griffith made the most, right? He upgraded himself from just a special teams guy to, hey, this could be our starting inside linebacker next year. Young guy, we don't have to maybe go expensive in free agency. We can bring him back and we can see what he's got in store here. So it's going to be fun to see how this battle works out over camp because Jonas Griffith is not, you know, Patrick Willis. He's not a Danny Trevathan. He's not going to be penciled in from now until the regular season. There's no battle at all. Now, Singleton, if he puts together some good games and some good practices, we could see a shakeup right there. Now, like I've been mentioning throughout the show, the Broncos released their first depth chart here. Now, we're not going to look at every single position group because, spoiler alert, 
Russell Wilson starting at quarterback. Javante Williams is starting at running back. But there are some other position battles. I think that are pretty interesting to see how the coaches view it. So let's start at the offensive line here. Because Quinn Miners, my guy Belly, is starting at right guard over Glasgow. So we thought this was coming. Now it's confirmed. Calvin Anderson, the current starting right tackle with Billy Turner still on the pup list. So that's how it's looking at the moment. Now when Turner returns, everything could change. But we'll see. So that's how the offensive line looks at the moment. I was looking at the defensive line, defensive line as well. Because we knew both Joneses were going to start. It was the other five-technique defensive end position that was kind of up for grabs. And Deshaun Williams is ahead of players like McTelvin Ajim, uh, Marquis Spencer, the rookie, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Wazurike out of Iowa State. So Deshaun Williams holding on, good story. Love to see his career, and hopefully he can, you know, flourish with the Broncos this year. He had some great games last year, started down the stretch, got injured, but it looks like he's picking up right where he left off. Now, before we get on out of here, on our last video, we did some letters to George Payton, where if I, I asked you guys, comment me down below, and I'm going to include your name on a letter to our guy George to try and persuade him to make a trade for Roquan Smith, even though it's not the most feasible it would be awesome. So here's everyone who's going to be on the letter. I picked up stamps on the way to work today. Watch out for a picture of the letter soon to come. But DRJ, Brian, the new guy, Chris, Daniel, Jack, DJ, T. Brody, Nathan. We got Richie Baez, Elon, David, Justin, Baxter, Ton. I always see you in the comments section. Hope I pronounce your name correctly. Ethan Morrison, Kool Aid. All Out Broncos is a legend here at the channel super luigi stars we got ray ray uh aiden ross burner john chris adam bill bell l i mean just one of the mvps of the comment section along with michael wilson and jacob youngblood not forgetting about you isaiah garcia and we got keanu and then four names to wrap it up before we almost send you guys out of here carlos Octavio, Aaron Gonzalez, you guys are all champs in the comment section. And then Dioncio Quinores. I hope I pronounced that correct. I think I got it wrong, though. My apologies. But you guys are all on the letter to our man, George Payton. Now, if you made it to the end of today's show, drop a simple let's ride down in the comment section. You guys are the real ones for watching all the way through and not tapping out after a couple of minutes. So shout out to you. Appreciate everyone for supporting the show. And comment Let's ride, Broncos country.